In this video, we'll be taking a look at solutions and calculations on solution concentrations. When you stop and think about it, we live in a world of solutions. The air we breathe is a huge gaseous solution. The oceans are solutions of about 50 different salts and water. And many of the rocks and minerals of the earth are solid solutions. We ourselves are largely aqueous solutions, most of it within our cells, whose water content contributes to about half of our body weight, and in our blood plasma and the interstitial fluid that bathes our cells, and for a total of about five liters for the adult. In order to understand the world in which we live and the organisms that inhabit it, we need to learn something about solutions. Solutions are homogeneous single phase mixtures of two or more components. For convenience, we refer to the substance that is in the majority as a solvent and the minority components are solutes. So if we think about the oceans, the water in the ocean is the solute and all the many salts that are dissolved in the water are, did I say that right? No, I didn't. Water is the solvent and all of the different um, salts that are in there are the solutes. When we think of a solution, we want to know how much of solute is in our solution. So solution concentrations are usually expressed as molarities and can be prepared by dissolving a known mass of solute in a solvent, or we can do dilutions of a stock solution. The concentration of a substance is the quantity of solute present in a given quantity of solution and molarity is equal to the moles of solute per moles per liter of solution. There are other concentration that you may come in contact with, and we can have, we can have percent concentrations, and we can have mass per mass percent, we can have mass per volume percent, and we can have volume per volume percent. For mass per mass, we have grams of solute per grams of solution times 100. Mass per volume is going to be grams of solute per milliliters of solution. Per milliliters of solution, also times 100, but I can't fit it on the screen. And volume is uh, is going to be the volume of solute divided by the volume of the solution times 100. Can can that fit? Let's see. Hopefully you can see that. All right. So let's take a look at molarity. Molarity we've mentioned before is moles of solute divided by liters of solution, okay? So if we take a look at the first example, we aren't given the number of moles of anything. So before we can actually solve this problem, we have to first determine the number of moles in our sample. So, how we determine the number of moles in our sample? We have to add up all of the, we have to add up the masses of all of the atoms in our compound, and that gives us what we call the molar mass. So the molar mass of our sodium hydroxide in a OH, if I take a look at a periodic table, it's going to be 22.99 plus 16.00 for oxygen plus 1.01. These are all the masses that you find on the periodic table. On the periodic table, they're given in AMU, but for our purposes, we're going to use them in terms of grams per mole. So we end up with 40.00 grams of sodium hydroxide per mole. Now let's take a look at our problem. 
problem says that 40 grams of sodium hydroxide in a 1.5 liter solution. And we want to know what the molarity is. Before we can determine what our molarity is, let's figure what we're given. I'm given 40.0 grams of sodium hydroxide, and that is going to be the mass of my solute. And I have 1.5 liters, and that is the volume of my solution. What do I need? I need to find the molarity. But first, I have to find the number of moles of NaOH. All right, so let's solve this problem. The number of moles is going to be equal to the amount that we're given, 40.0 grams, times our molar mass. Well, this is pretty simple. If I have 40 grams and the molar mass is 40 grams per mole, then I have 1.0 moles of NaOH. So now my molarity is going to be... 1.0 moles divided by 1.5 liters and what we get here is 0 0.666 and if we take a look at our significant figures starting our starting point we had three sig figs and three sig figs so our answer should also have three sig figs three sig figs so we've got 0 0.666 molar Let's take a look at our second problem. 4.10 grams of magnesium chloride in 300 point milliliters of solution. Once again, we've got to find our molar mass of magnesium chloride. You need your periodic table for that. And that's going to be 24.31 plus 2 times... 35.45 and that gives us 95.21 grams per mole. All right, so what are we given? What are we given? We're given 4.10 grams of magnesium chloride and we have 300 point milliliters of solution. So once again, we're given the mass and not the number of moles. So we need the molarity, but first we have to find the number of moles. So how many moles do we have? Let's see. We get 4.10 grams of magnesium chloride times one mole per 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride, and we get 0.4306. Keep an extra sig fig. Keep an extra sig fig um, so that we can follow through with um, the calculations later on. Now, Molarity is given in moles of solute per liter of solution. The volume that we were given is 300 milliliters. So before we would determine our molarity, we have to convert that volume into liters. So 300 milliliters is equal to 0 0.300 liters. So what's our molarity? 0 0.4, 0 0.4, <coughs> excuse me, 0 0.4306 moles divided by 0 0.300 liters. And that gives us 0.1435. So if we make the right number of significant figures, we get 0 0.144 molar. 
Let's try some more problems. The last set of problems we were looking at going from gram small to our molarity. Here we have some different information. Let's see what we're given to figure out how we solve this problem. If 0.885 moles of copper 2 sulfate are dissolved in enough water to make 70 point milliliters of solution, what is the molarity of the solution? Okay, what do we have? We are given that we have 0.885 moles of copper sulfate. We're also given that the total volume of our solution is 70 milliliters. Remember, molarity is moles per liter. So let's go ahead and convert this um, volume into liters. One, two, three. So that means that we got 0 0.0700 liters. Don't forget those zeros on the end because there, there's a decimal place here and those zeros are significant. So we're going to hold on to those at the end. What do we need? We need molarity. All right, well, this problem is pretty simple because we have the most and we have the liters. So that's just going to be equal to 0.885 divided by 0 0.0700. Well, liters, don't, don't forget your, your units. And when we plug everything in, we get 12.64. But remember our significant figures, we have three of them. So it's going to be 12.6 molar. Let's take a look at this last problem here. How many grams of calcium nitrate are needed to make 3.3 liters of a 0 0.10 molar solution? Hmm, how do we go about solving this? Well, we need to know how many grams, um, and we're given the molarity and the volume. So let's take a look at what we're given. Give it. I'm given my volume, which is 3.30 liters, and I'm given my molarity, which is 0 0.10 molar, right? And I need grams of calcium nitrate. Okay, well, like the previous two questions, we needed to use the molar mass because if I'm given the volume and the molarity, I can find out the number of moles. So if I wanna know the number of moles of calcium nitrate that we have, I have that 3.30 liters times my molarity which is 0 0.10 moles per one liter. And we end up with the number of moles so we end up with 0 0.33 moles. But the question is asking for grams. So what do we need? We need our molar mass so the molar mass of calcium nitrate, if we add together all of our atoms, we get 35.45 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 6 times 16.00, and we get a molar mass of 159.47 grams per mole. So now if we want to determine the number of grams, and we have our number of moles, we just use the molar mass. So I have 159.47 grams for one mole. My moles are gonna cancel out, and you end up with 52.62, we need to have three sig figs, so it's 52, not 32, 52.6 grams of calcium nitrate. 